great. I love you, Wi-Fi. Um, so, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll invite Catherine Mitchell. Hi Lucy, I don't know what you said beforehand <laughs> before you introduced me but thankfully I could hear you say my name. Oh, thanks so much, I hope you can all hear me. I'm really, really pleased to be here. I'm Catherine Mitchell. I'm National Director for Combined Arts with Arts Council England. And I know some of our um, audience will know who Arts Council is, but I'm um, assuming that maybe not everybody does. So we're the National Agency for Arts Museums and Libraries in England. We're a funder. We have money from the UK government and also our national lottery and together these add up to about 500 million each year that we distribute mainly as grants and we're also a development agency we'll, so we'll work with places, people, artists, audiences to drive forward culture. Um, my area of work is combined arts which covers art centres, outdoor arts, uh, contemporary circus, participatory arts and festivals. So I'm really lucky there. And festivals are a really big part of what we fund, including street theatre festivals. Um, I can uh, Later I can come on to why we do value them so much, but, but we certainly do in terms of investment. Our, our investment has grown hugely over the last few years. So in 2012, we funded, um, through just our lottery alone, we, we invested 10 million pounds into festivals. And last year that had grown to 27 million, supporting a thousand projects, either festivals themselves or pieces of work going into festivals. And we also have regular funding for, in four year blocks for our national portfolio organizations. And I quickly totted up, yes, quickly added up yesterday, that was about 18 million pounds that we invest each year in festival in festivals and festival work so that's my introduction i'm really happy to listen to all the festivals here and to artists and producers and i'm very happy to talk later about any any other aspects of our new strategy or how how we're supporting artists at this uh, artists and festivals at this extraordinary time thank you Thank you so much, Catherine. I hope the Wi-Fi is a little better now. Okay, uh, so now uh, Lars Seberg, would you like to introduce yourself, Lars? Yes, um, I, I do almost the same as my predecessor here. I'm chief of board of uh, the Performing Arts Committee for the second time in, 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 in Denmark. And uh, basically we cover, uh, we have the public uh, grants for all the free groups, so-called free groups, um, and for all dance outside of the Royal Theater, for street arts, for festivals, for international collaborations. Um, we have a budget of 10% of all uh, the, the, the overall budget for theater. So most funding goes in Denmark to the uh, big institutions and half of the funding is allocated for the Royal Theater. But we have an important uh, role to play and we, uh, uh, right now benefit for a much better collaboration between the institutional theatres and the free groups and this is a focus for us. Thank you, thank you so much Lars. Um, I'd now like to invite Jens to please introduce himself. Jens? Is he, is he frozen? Okay. Just to answer the artistic director. Oh, Jens, we're not hearing you now. Hello. Oh, sorry.
sorry, Jens, we kind of lost you. Now it's your turn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pass on to someone else. Okay, Catherine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my name is Katrin Barr. I'm from Germany. Uh, in 2010, I founded uh, with my colleague Julia van Wild uh, Office for Cultural Service, and uh, our main goal is to organize uh, outdoor arts festivals. In, in 2015, we took over the artistic direction of one of the biggest festivals in Germany. It's the Teta Tet Festival, which takes place every two years. It's a, and uh, it should have been uh, take place this year, uh, but we postponed it to next year, so. Thank you, Catherine. And um, maybe next we could go to you, Anna. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good morning to everybody from Tarrega, which is a small and rural town located in Catalonia, 100 kilometers west from Barcelona and with 31 degrees right now. My name is Anna Giribet Argiles and I'm the artistic director of Fila Targa, which is a performing arts market specialized on street arts that takes time the second weekend of September since 1981. I've been working here in Fila Targa since 2011. We are a team of seven people working on the organization. All of them are fantastic professionals, which I learn every single day from them. Nowadays, the project keeps moving and thinking now more than ever, putting on the center the debate about the public space and the street arts. Thanks for the invitation to Soul Festival and Passage. Thanks to Jens and all the team who makes this event possible. Super, thank you, Anna. And maybe next we could go to you, Joe. What do you want to know? Uh, your name, your organization, okay. <laughs> and your okay, So yeah, I'm, I'm Jerry McIntosh. I'm director of an organization called Sea Change Arts, based in Great Yarmouth, which is a seaside holiday town on the east coast of England, and also the UK capital of circus, which some people know at the moment, and more people are going to know over the next 10 years. And uh, I'm the director of the Out There International Festival of Street Arts and Circus, which we started in 2008. And we also now um, run a 20,000 square feet creation space complex of buildings called the Drill House, um, in which artists um, create work um, in residencies, um, artists from all over the world, as well as from the UK. And we have uh, very regular work with communities and a circus school and lots of projects. And the festival is um, probably the second largest street arts festival in the UK, it's probably the biggest program of circus, but mostly outdoors. And we have about 65,000 people coming every year, um, of which half are people that are otherwise uh, very little engaged with the arts. So the big mission is to increase engagement with those that don't engage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Joe. That's brilliant. Um, maybe next we could go to you, Fanny. Yeah. Thank so you. I'm uh, Fanny Nani from Budapest, Hungary, and I'm representing the east part of Europe in this diversity, uh, geographical diversity. And, uh, but, um, the realm here in Hungary and in Eastern Europe is obviously very different from the western and the northern part of Europe. So as you know, we, uh, we live in a country with limited uh, democracy, let's say nicely. Uh, we have founded um, our festival in 2008 and then Fidesz is a governing uh, authoritarian party in Hungary to some power since 2010. 
So basically, most of our existence uh, just happened under this dictatorial regime, which means that uh, if uh, we are not in line with the political uh, criteria of the government, we don't really have budget, we don't really have like public support. So we are a very small festival with a very limited uh, uh, budget. We are absolutely independent. We are relying on in international money, some public funds, but very few. Um, it's very, very important for us uh, to mention that we are part of an net international network called in situ, just like Fira Teraga. And um, also that we define ourselves a festival of uh, site-specific art and art in public space. And I can find the difference between street festival and festival in public space, but maybe later we can talk about it more in details. So I think that's all about. Oh, that would be great. Thank you, Fanny. That's super. And um, maybe next we can have uh, Denny. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me well? Yes. Okay. My name is Denis Lafori. I am from Alès. It's south of France, a small town of uh, 40,000 uh, 40, inhabitants. Uh, I am running a, a theater. Um, a rather big theater with, with two, uh, two auditorium. One is 900 seats, the other one is 200 seats, and also I run a festival called Craters. Uh, Alès is, is an industrial town, a small industrial town, who suffered after the closure of the uh, mining industry, uh, and now it's a kind of a industrial revival in the town. So it's very interesting to work here. And uh, what I try to do is to increase the relationship between uh, people in general and the artists and what they can propose in the, in the town. So I am uh, performing uh, shows in my theater, but also outside in the small villages or in the schools and also in my festival in the streets also and in the uh, civil mountain near, near Alès and near the river also. So uh, I, I can put, uh, I try to put uh, uh, everywhere um, artists and proposition to, to people. That's it. Thank you, that's, that's super fascinating and I'm sure we'll look forward to chatting more about that. Um, now, uh, Federico. Yes, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, nice to be here and uh, hi to uh, all of you and all uh, the others. And uh, I'm a director of the National Federation of Street Arts in Italy. Uh, the name is Street Arts, but it's not uh, so right. And I'm going to link to what Fanny said before. And uh, there is a difference between uh, outdoor arts and uh, uh, arts, uh, even performing arts in public spaces. And we are uh, working, uh, we, are, we, we, we don't organize a festival, but we have an association in the Federation organizing festival, but we have also uh, artists. And we, are tr we try to focus on policies on public spaces. Uh, both uh, for outdoor arts and uh, arts in public space. I don't go deeper on this because uh, it's a long, long uh, uh, argument. But uh, anyway, this is almost uh, my position in this uh, check. Super. Thank you, Federico. I see a common theme coming along. Um, and can we come back to you, Jens, and see if you are there now? Let's try. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm glad. <laughs> My name is Jens Fleman Hansen. I'm the artistic director of So Festival in Skegness, uh, which is unfortunately cancelled. And that being said, uh, it has actually redefined ourself, uh, itself uh, in the sense that we are, although it's been cancelled, doing a lot of projects. Uh, we have uh, done a lot of things that could be digitalized, and we have also made commissions for for uh, some local regional Lincolnshire artists. So uh, although it's a pretty bad situation in the UK, we managed to do some great stuff anyway. 
Uh, I'm also the director of Passage Festival in, uh, in Helsingør, Helsingborg, Denmark and Sweden. And it's actually happening. And uh, it's in a way the same story that we had to redefine the festival, but uh, we, we never really was in any doubt that we were going to do it. Uh, but we have been, we had to cancel some shows, unfortunately. And basically we have been also very little in the central of town and more out in the landscape. You can say that's, that's some of the things uh, that we have been doing. And some of the work we have also redefined. We have some, some artists that should do a full scale project that has been canceled where we have offered them an opportunity to maybe do a small part of, of the work so that they don't waste uh, a full year's work, but then maybe can present the full, full work uh, next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so just, um, uh, I think my Wi-Fi is a bit better. So just in case people didn't hear me at the start, this is the, um, the So Many Roads, the Future of European Street Theatre Festivals. And it's hosted by the SO so Festival, the Magna Vitae and the, the Passage Festival in, in Denmark. So just to, to repeat that and to say also, if you have questions for the panelists, what we will do is if you could put them in the Q&A and then afterwards when we've had our discussion and our debate, um, we would love to take uh, your questions. Um, uh, so that's, that's the kind of the housekeeping. So SOFA Festival is happening between the 1st and the 2nd of August and Matthew will put the link there. It is, the link is there. And the Passage Festival is happening right now. Uh, started on the 27th of July until the 1st of August. And Jens is, the, as he said, the artistic director between both of uh, these festivals. So basically running two festivals at the same time in the middle of a pandemic. It's not a challenge at all, easy. <laughs> So anyway, um, to get to the heart of our question, um, I'd like to invite our panelists now to, to paint for us their new vision or their dream for how we can re-realize and reimagine festivals going forward in the future, in particular the European festivals that we are all um, specifically speaking about today. So um, I'd like to perhaps uh, invite Anna to present us with her imagination. Okay, it's, it's my turn, but when Lucy asked us about sharing a dream, I was thinking really about a dream. I mean, it's probably not possible, but I'm gonna say what is a dream, like take, take in, in, in this place, okay? So my dream, about uh, European Street Arts Festival. Uh, it's similar to the Olympic Games. I mean, I like the idea of having the best artists and companies with a high quality level, with the best ones, organizing a week of the best shows ever, using the whole city as it is, no new constructions or stadiums, using churches, squares, schools, swimming pools, countryside, farms, everything. Uh, the Avon has to be a great opportunity for volunteers. The citizens has to be part of the Olympic Games. And these Olympic street arts games has to take in place every four years in a different country, being nomadic and has to be the event of the year where everybody, absolutely everybody, is waiting for it because have a place to enjoy and to participate. This is my dream. <laughs> Thank you, Anna, that's amazing. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's something that that's come up in a few of your conversations and your comments about your work is the engagement with the citizens. So uh, I look forward to discussing that a bit further. Maybe um, Federico, would you like to tell us your vision? Well, <laughs> it, it depends. It has to be useful for a, a festival, uh, a festival question, no? Uh, 
it's it's not so it's not so easy because we try to 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 have a vision of, for example for what about fresh street in italy it was a, a big event coming in a few few months and everything has a bang so that is it and everything has banged with all, 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 all around you where it was a, a a desert uh, of a festival, desert of events, and then nobody knows uh, how to dream about their own festival. Uh, I, I, I have a dream, yes, I have a dream. Uh, it, it's about the, the, the social role, role of artists and also organizers. I think that uh, this passage has been so important for all of us because uh, uh, it, uh, it gave us uh, a, a possibility to uh, question to ourselves, which is uh, our role in all this. It's just not the event in itself, not just the market in itself, it's just not mobility in itself. It's uh, which is the role uh, uh, between uh, we and the audience it's just entertainment not only entertainment there is something more so for example uh, uh, one of the the big questions uh, of the artists and organizers in italy uh, during those days those months was uh, uh, can we uh, think about a new creativity to to let uh, uh, people, let uh, uh, I say audience, but it's not audience. It's people, people. Let uh, may uh, uh, be able to to have a new fruition of the shows because uh, uh, everything has changed. So maybe I think that the big, big, big dream is that uh, that we can uh, use this time, this uh, this. Uh, strange possibility and you can you uh, uh, it's not anything is uh, as before but to uh, to ask to ourselves which uh, which is our role uh, how we can come back to the street to the public space to the outdoor uh, spaces uh, uh, with another another thought not just the event because sometimes we we lose our mission i think Okay, okay, uh, very interesting. I'm, I, I'm curious. Um, Fanny, I love to hear from Hungary. Yeah, I, I think I can just follow up these uh, thoughts from Frederico and also that what, uh, what I experienced uh, during these months that there are some elements which um, we started working on and then uh, earlier which felt that it's uh, like a it's coming from our less uh, fortunate situation, but now we can, from this disadvantage, make a kind of a um, future direction, let's say. So for example, we never had a big budget, so we never had a big audience. We always just uh, invited smaller projects and with smaller projects, we just targeted more like, um, more the people, not an audience, but the people. We try to find a connection with, with our community or, uh, more with, with the, the people. Also what Anna mentioned and what I know that Fira Zeraga is about, that using the whole city, we, we always try to use the city without any built stage or whatever. So even if they are a kind of a stage, it's just the square itself. We never build a, a stage uh, in the city. And we always encourage artists or we invite artists who are more size specific so they are using uh, specific places of the city and not like bringing just a, a show and putting anywhere in the city but just really uh, try to go deeper in the location but also in the context so i think it's very important also to to work not only with the, the city but also the context the people and uh, also there's one more aspect which um, again it's coming from our situation that we with the small budget, it also means that we don't have a big promotion budget. So we just can promote our, our festival on a, on a large scale. 
So what we, we aim is to um, expand um, the reception in time. So for example, uh, making or uh, organizing that cause, uh, those kind of projects which I can remain on site. So for example, digitally, like a, a GPS thing or whatever. And then our audience is not like concentrated in time, like because the big festivals can do that that they are promoting and there's a huge audience and they are in the same place at the same time. And because we don't have this big promotion budget, it's rather expanded in time. And in this pandemic uh, times, it's better if people are not <laughs> together, but the same number of people can see the same thing, but in an expanded time. So, so in a, just a, the, um, in a nutshell, what, what I dream is what we are already doing in a way is uh, focusing more on uh, collaboration with the city, with uh, citizens, not the city, citizens, with the location, with the context, and uh, less crowd, more time, something like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Fanny. Um, and now I'd like to come to Joe. Okay, um, well, I mean, First off, in terms of what I actually think the future looks like, I, I personally don't believe we're about to see the face of <coughs> street arts and outdoor arts festivals completely changed permanently for the future. I think people, the, the, the role of these festivals is to bring a lot of people together to celebrate, be joyous. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that's going to go away. Um, and even for next year, um, we're constantly working with artists who are coming to us either with existing projects or new projects and saying, should we, you know, shall we now adapt? Shall we make this COVID proof? And my line at the moment is no, make the art you want to make, uh, be ready to do the show you want, want to do. Really, it's so fast moving. Let's, let's just see how it goes. But our, our view is that we will be back doing proper big street arts festivals um, in the way that we were before. Um, and we'll continue doing so. But there are some other things that are changing. Um, there, there are obvious challenges, but there are some opportunities as well. I mean, the, the obvious challenge, I hate to say it, is gonna be lack of money. Um, it, things are gonna tighten up and um, you know we've got councils and cities, local authorities that are already really, really have lost a lot of money through the pandemic. Um, and perhaps in ways that people don't obviously, always appreciate in Great Yarmouth, the holiday town, they've lost nearly 700,000, almost a million pounds in car parking income, which they rely on. So it's a big dent. So that's the first immediate thing is we don't really know what's going to happen with local council uh, finances going forward, which is slightly worrying. Um, so, but our attitude to that is it, the early hard days of setting something Great Yarmouth is we are just going to have to be as efficient as we possibly can. There's no room for waste. I think artists need to really be aware of this. They are going to, more than ever, in my view, need to make shows that are well made, maybe with a lot of time, a lot of focus, really thinking about the market and the longevity of their shows. It's quite difficult for artists anyway, but you know, it's tough when they make a show, put the heart and soul in it, it goes out three or four times. That's the end of the run and they want to make the next thing. I think there's got to be a bit less of that. Now, the, the exciting stuff is, um, is sort of coming right now. Um, Yarmouth, big, big tourism place and the work we've been doing and the interest from in it from the town that comes from generating really a lot of economic benefit from, from visitors. This isn't a town that has about 7 million visits a year um, in any case. Um, the tourist authority, that sector um, of the local economy is desperate to get things going that will bring people back and in winter. So whilst the summer has been kind of lost and normally would put on a big festival in September that we're not going to do, but we are now working with the city on potentially quite a big um, program of light, fire and light based works and installations, fire gardens, projections, illuminations, right across the whole of the winter. Um, now for me, I'm, I've wanted to do this for ages. Um, and in the UK, um, 
which doesn't perhaps have the best weather of all of Europe, though it does seem to be getting a bit better in, in these days. Traditionally, some of our aspirations about outdoor arts were limited by the climate. And it's really good to now be exploring how outdoor arts can happen right across the year. And I think that might change some minds and, and, and some opinions. Um, it also happens to be linking at this moment in time with um, it's quite a program of investment um, in some of the uh, poorer towns um, in the UK, of which Great Armouth is one called the Towns Deal. And we are now finally actually making some inroads in that. Um, about capital resource and in a similar way our big ambition about that is over the next 10 years we want the town and what we do um, to be uh, really recognized as a kind of UK capital of circus and outdoor arts but especially in public space um, and try and bring some of that buzz that happens over when we put on the out there festival amazing three four five buzzy days transforms the place but then there's the other 51 weeks of the year and we want to bring some of that energy across the whole year and that is going to be the big mission and the big vision for the future the tough times but yeah some opportunities perhaps thank you for your little dose of reality there joe and <laughs> around finances and economy uh, it's uh, it's good to keep a, a, a focus on the reality also of actually putting on these festivals. It costs money, so. Um, uh, and now I'd like to invite Catherine to give us her thoughts. Hi, so I, uh, what do I dream for a future festival? I, am, I have to say that I really uh, stuck a bit to the past <laughs> because what the street theatre means to me is always the not the distance or digitality but the the interaction between artists and and uh, audience and and that they are close to each other and and the joyous mass uh, like it is in the streets in our town where we when we do our festival and uh, so to think about how different it would be when they are all on, on if they are not together and if they have to keep the distance it's it's not so easy for me to think about this so uh, we we are already working on the next edition for next year uh, 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 COVID proof version of the festival which means uh, we we have to uh, limit the audience and that's what we are thinking about now how to do it and uh, of course um, we also have to deal with less money and, and less budget so yeah it's not so easy to dream about all that when if you already have to work on a on the other forms so um, but if I, when I, or what I want to see in the future, it's not so such a COVID uh, theme or issue, but more we have a lot of uh, issues in the in our society uh, in terms of racism and and immigrants and, and uh, or the whole gender conformity and what I want or what I dream of is a, a street art which is more political and more uh, handle with social uh, society issues not so much just artistic uh, um, issues. So I think we have to be more political in, in the arts again. And uh, so I don't, in Germany, it's still a lot of entertainment and light, joyous, yeah, arts. And I think we have to uh, change the issues in arts, so. That's what I dream, <laughs> but it's more the, the programmatical, not so much the how to produce a festival. Yeah. 
Fascinating. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Um, yes, political art is always important. Jenny, how is it in France? What is your vision? Okay. Um, first of all, um, we cannot give up uh, to uh, give up the values uh, we believe in. It's to gather people around the artists. So uh, I dream of a bigger festival, uh, but uh, with a different uh, way to do it. Uh, I think it's important to, to have a festival that can breathe uh, in a duration. So not only uh, a weekend, but uh, a whole week. And, and to share with, uh, between artists and people, an experience, a kind of experience. Uh, take time to experiment with the public during a week. That's, that's uh, for me uh, important. Um, I think uh, a show is good when you are different after seeing the shows than, than before. So uh, I, I'd like to, to, have the, to take the time uh, to offer the artist uh, uh, the possibilities of experiment that, that things, to, to, to have a, 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 a rehearsal also, but imagination and also creation directly in situ and share it during a week in different places in my town, but also in the uh, superb environment we have in, in Alès, uh, river and, and uh, mountains and everywhere. And so uh, I think uh, the, the the two directions we can take is the direction of the nature to, to a kind of a rev revival with the nature, you need it. And also uh, to uh, understand what's the new technique we have in the society like uh, uh, internet and so on. So it's the direction that I, I, I want to, to show in that festival, uh, 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 be closer, much closer to the nature, but also to understand wh what's happened in society now. Uh, that's it. Fantastic. Thank you, Denny. Uh, the, the definition of art and nature working together. I love it. Um, now, Jens, we'd like to hear from you. How is it? How do you visualize it? I think what is really important about street arts festival or festivals taking place in, in public space is that we keep them open, that we don't make a too strong de defini definition so that we turn them into institutions. Uh, because the public space, uh, the public is changing all the time. And so I think that's also a, a, a thing that we have to consider being a, a festival happening in, in, in the public space. It's certainly the one part of the festival the other part is the artists. And there we also have to be open uh, in order to welcome all kinds of new uh, types of, of uh, artistic work so that we are not just focusing on a specific, very successful concept, uh, but are allowing ourselves to experiment all the time. Uh, I'm very glad what, what Denise said about the nature. We have, we have, this year we are doing a lot in nature in, in uh, Helsingør. Uh, and it's really, and actually with one company from uh, from almost from a list from Andus, uh, Ambat uh, are doing an experiment in, in, in nature and it, it was really successful, I think, but also very experimental. Some other topics I think are very important is also uh, the, the discussion about uh, indoor theater and outdoor theater. I think that's, it, it's, for me, it's important to recognize that, that uh, I am working with theater and it has some heritage coming from the indoor theater. And this relation I find very interesting. Uh, and there I would also like to quote Denis. He's my big star, I'm a big fan of his work because he has a theater. He has a, a, a very nice uh, theater in Alès and also doing a street theater festival. And I think that's a very interesting combination. It doesn't has, have to be as such, but I think that both street theater festivals and indoor theaters have to recognize each other and that they are doing important work. Uh, for us, when we are doing stuff uh, in public space, we really have a diverse audience. 
and it's not and i think every one of you have it's not just something we say we can take basically any photo from taking at our festival the people that the indoor theaters are struggling to achieve and to take part in 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 the indoor performances they are there at at the at, at our festivals and i think that arts council england and catherine can confirm that they did some they've done some really great research about this in in the, in, in the uk that are, are are actually confirming that the street theater festivals are the festivals that are uh, really in, in uh, synchronized demographically with the population of the society. And I think that's very important to, to remember. Two last points I would say is that I'm really concerned what is happening in Eastern Europe uh, and we have to, to be aware uh, and be supportive. And uh, I think there's a lot of interesting things happening there. Uh, the project that, that Fanny is talking about, I think are, are really interesting for us also to follow but also to be supportive and, and really do corporations uh, with Eastern Europe in, in, in order to make a, 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 a better overall uh, artistic concept of Europe also. And the same thing a little bit with the UK and the, the Brexit situation. We don't know exactly what direction it's going to take, but the UK is a big player in, in uh, European street arts. And uh, it's really important that we that we still find ways of uh, cooperating uh, and, and are also supporting the arts in the UK in order to, to uh, give them opportunities uh, to come out of the rest of Europe. Thank you, Jens, thank you. Um, maybe I'll come to you there, Catherine. Would you like to come in there in response to Jens? And then I go to Lars. Yes, so I think it's just been put up in the chat. There was um, a piece of research over three years with an extensive number of, of big data set that Outdoor Arts did with uh, the audience agency um, that showed that the <coughs> audience uh, for Outdoor Arts was most closely aligned to the UK demographic of, our, of the UK population, much more so than any other kind of art form. So I think that's something about, and, and that didn't change, even if outdoor arts were, um, if, if they ha were ticketed, they were paid. So there's something about not having that threshold and people seeing their towns and villages and cities reimagined and feeling comfortable to be in them, even though they're seeing them in a different way. So that was a really interesting piece of work and it's certainly one, one of the many reasons why Arts Council finds um, uh, outdoor arts festivals, street theatre festivals, um, how, how they it underpin getting more arts and culture to more people. Because there's quite a, you know, in other art forms, it's a very narrow range of, of the population who actually benefit from arts that have been funded through public subsidy. And clearly that's not right. You know, that isn't morally right. And that is certainly something that will be, that underpins our new 10 year strategy. That's fantastic to hear. I mean, I think the whole democratization of arts in the last 100 years has been a, a, a huge steep learning curve and I think there's probably lots we could say about that. Lars, have you thoughts? Yes, um, I, I think in line with what uh, Catherine was just saying, it's, uh, you could, if you look upon this uh, terrible situation in a positive way, uh, I think a lot of artists have been forced to move in the direction of new audiences. And we have tried to facilitate this movement by, uh, with an extra funding this year, uh, with the headline called Together About the Arts, where we asked the artists to come up with new ways of, uh, of uh, making projects, of uh, 
in inventing new new ways of approaching audiences, also new audiences. So in a way, there's a possibility in this situation for a new kind of audience development, I think. Uh, and of course, uh, street art is uh, also in a way legitimizing the public funding in a much stronger way than uh, the institutions are able to do. Because we all know that uh, the institutions, the big theaters and so on, uh, have a fairly uh, selected audience compared to what you approach when you're just walking uh, uh, through uh, the streets of the city or if you are engaging in, in public space uh, projects or even as a lot of the applications that we got um, uh, was, uh, was uh, experiencing with was to go out into the nature. So uh, a lot of new uh, projects have, have appeared uh, because of this uh, situation. I think also what Jens was saying about the relation between uh, the indoor theaters and the street theater is of course obvious. Uh, one of the most moving scenes I have experienced in this way was actually on film. It was Ariane Muskin's Moliere film where you have this uh, market uh, scene just after Moliere lost his beloved mother. He's totally, totally uh, down on, on sorrow. And then his grandfather takes him to this marketplace. And there's a Commedia dell'arte uh, show with a terribly funny death, uh, uh, death character. And through that, uh, he is able to overcome his sorrow. And then it's also, of course, uh, you, you go to the next scene and then he's the director. Uh, he's starting uh, his career as an actor and and writer. It's very moving, a, a very moving connection between what an audience can appear by chance or almost and then move on to indoor. Thank you, Lars. I mean, it seems to me that a lot of us have spoken a lot about the connection between the artist and the the live experience and the audience and the, the necessity for citizen engagement. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very moved by this as, as, as coming through so strongly because it's something I deeply believe in. Um, I'd, li I'd like to hear your, your feelings on that. And I just, you can all unmute yourselves and have a discussion. I, I'm not going to ask you to speak in any order. Um, because now that we have created your, painted this picture, I see a lot of threads of similarity throughout. Um, the citizen engagement, the use of space, the use of nature, the reaching into rural areas, the not always having to have the biggest and the most largest audiences. So for me, this gives great hope for the future of outer arts festivals, even in pandemic times. What are your observations, thoughts, feelings? Just jump in. Fanny. Um, I just would like to react what uh, Katrin said about the interaction. That um, anytime when I was in a big opener street uh, performance, I never felt the interaction because we are in a huge crowd. There is the actors, performers, musicians, whatever. 
and we don't have the interaction. Um, I'm in the crowd, I try to see something. I, if the, the, the performance is moving, it's even worse because then I have to somehow find my way to, to follow. And I never had the interaction. And I, for me, I know that there are different kind of festivals and, and um, priorities, but for me, it's more important to have a more direct interaction between the audience and the performance. And if the scale is smaller, I think, you can reach it better. Uh, maybe uh, others I disagree, uh, but that's just something which uh, uh, I just wanted to react what Katrin said. And also it's political and versus entertainment that because of our situation, we, uh, we want to be political. It's an indirect political. So I never say that in fact the government or whatever, so it's not that direct political um, uh, art, but I think that it's very political if you go out to the street and try to keep the um, critical thinking, the openness, what Jens just said, that openness is always a very important uh, notion for, for our festival, openness for, for international uh, productions also, because the, the cultural policy of the, the Hungarian government is just closing down and be the national culture instead of the international culture. Um, so, uh, so I think that going out to public space is already political, at least in Hungary or in Europe. And, um, and it can be entertainment at the same time. So it's very good if it can, if can, can be somehow combined and somehow like sensibilization of the people for the uh, problems, which can be like political problems, social problems, can be natural. So if they're uh, connected to the whole climate crisis. Um, so yeah, I think this yeah. is what I wanted to react to what I heard before. Yeah, thank you, Fanny. That's great. I see Anna sitting forward in her seat. Anna, tell us what is going through your mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think it's very important to separate the two kind of futures, a long term and a short term future. The, the main thing is about now the immediate future and the uncertainty on this conjunctural moment and how we adapt our events or venues with all these restrictions that affect our identity as a festival, our essence as a festival. And the most important thing is what happens with these experiential projects that needs the participation, the touch, in order to be done. They need to be adapted. And this is probably sad for me because I'm really on this kind of public space projects like Kamchatka. What Kamchatka will do without the collaboration of the audiences? That's the question. A part of that, I truly believe that normalcy, as Joe said, will return in a long future, maybe two years. Normals in terms of programming national, international companies, massive audiences, safety, release, quantity from public space. I really think, I, I want to think that this normalcy will return with, of course, some additions relate, related to health protocols, behaviors in case of our growth. Um, for me, the problem right now is how we can help this kind of companies that their main job is about their contribution, collaboration, and they need they need uh, the, to cheat the, the audience in order to the performance be done. That's that's the main thing right now. I think. Thank you, Hannah. Indeed. And um, Catherine, did you want to say something about the political again? Uh, in general, I, I uh, agree with Fanny about the political. It, it isn't, I, I didn't want to split it into two, entertainment or political. It's, it, it has to, to come together to, to, uh, to be a joyful uh, adventure festival. But, uh, but in, so perhaps it's in our situation, we are also program not so many uh, 
theater on location, but also a contemporary circus. And it's so it's it's uh, and that was my idea about how to to combine the the artistic skills with this with the uh, with a good story. <laughs> so. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Are you sitting on the edge of your seat there? Bursting to say yeah, very something. Much so. Yeah, just to reinforce, I think it's not just about festivals work with artists, and um, it's not just about how we imagine the future of a festival. It's it's also how artists uh, the, the work they create, and um, I completely agree in terms of uh, you know a context in which well we need or it would be interesting to have more political work, uh, more even more participatory work. And participatory work in the UK, I think that, that has been increasing, and that's something that we're kind of looking at in terms of different ways. I think a while a while back, I think people regarded participation as kind of community projects that were made with artists and communities prior to a festival and then displayed. But in the recent years, um, in some cases, it's been a lot more in the way of spontaneous participation and involvement, um, by, which I think is great. And we need, we need to have both and develop both. But in terms of artists, I suppose what we would be really interested to see, and I really hope they don't get too distracted by uh, COVID, which is all everyone that talks about at the moment, especially given the time it takes to make good new work. So I hope it's two years from now, we're not just seeing loads and loads of shows about COVID. I'm not going to be programming any. I can tell you, I want to move on from that and get on back to some, some other issues. Um, but particularly in terms of political work and environmental work, we need good art. And what I mean by that is art that is not just powerful and says, you know, this is wrong. We need artists that use their brilliant uh, abilities to connect people to win people's minds and get people thinking in ways that they weren't um, or, or haven't done. Um, you know, this is the job of, you know, humour, intelligence, creativity. Um, we really need this. Uh, it, it, in work we've commissioned, I mean, this, the number of submissions, especially last year, um, for potential work around uh, climate change was just enormous. It was kind of like, I would have said 85% of proposals we were receiving were about climate change. And yet my response to that was, well, what about climate change? You know, you've got to say something more than it's bad. Um, it's bad and we should worry about that. I think the public have got that message. They know it's bad and they are worried about it. We've got to, I'm looking for work that is more constructive about that maybe painting a vision for the future what life is going to change how's it going to change we don't really know what's it going to look like um so we're really looking to artists and i think that's our big job at the moment is to is to um get behind artists and uh, encourage them to be really creative and thinking for the future and perhaps doing things in a in a in a different way that's our that's our number one thing at the moment Thank you, Joe. I mean, that's fantastic, uh, you know, to look to artists to reimagine the future while we are all here thinking about how do we reimagine festivals. Well, if festivals are programming artists, then we have to reimagine it together, no? So um, I'm going to turn to Denny now. Although, Fanny, you wanted to come in real quick because then I want to go to Denny for a second. It's really quick. So when uh, Joe said that it's obvious that climate crisis is bad. You know, here in Hungary, one of the ministers said that climate crisis is a conspiracy of the liberals. So here you have to uh, 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 make aware of the people that it's bad. So there is a big difference. So I just wanted to very quickly say that. Yes. And uh, Denny, uh, just to pick up on Joe's point about the work must make you um, move you to be different and it ties in exactly with what you said a show is good when you are different after seeing it than before so how then we as festival makers can be this transformative agent hmm. i don't know it's a, it's a question of uh, artistic proposal you know and uh, choose uh, i think uh, a festival is um, uh, have to to have a variety of proposal 
you know, uh, who conduct the, the audience to, to have a um, uh, very good entertainment show. And, and, and uh, besides this show, uh, something political very strong. And uh, he, he can choose uh, uh, and be uh, surprised by a new proposal because he's just uh, uh, besides, uh, just close to, to, to the, the two proposition. And uh, that's why the public like uh, our, our festival because uh, they don't know uh, what, what they, they have to, 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 to see. The proposal is here, the proposal are, 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 are in front of them and, and they have to choose that or that. And, and sometimes they are surprised and, and they hear something they never hear n nowhere else. So that's important to, to propose that kind of things. And, and I think the, the artists uh, uh, who have skills for, 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 for that in the street uh, can, can attract the public uh, and to, to propose, their, uh, propose them uh, new ideas of, of the society that they never think uh, about. Uh, that's very interesting, you know. Uh, is that the only place you can do that? Not in the television, not in the internet, but in the street. So that, that's why we are very important. Uh, and it's important to, to, to let the public uh, um, dispose uh, uh, to, to have uh, a, free, a free place to, 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 uh, uh, to put, to put that, that proposal the, uh, in front of the public. Thank you. Sorry for my English, it's not, uh, not so good. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. And we probably talk very fast, especially in Ireland. Um, I'm going to go because I realized the time and I just had a quick look. There's a lot of questions in the in the box. So I better quickly ask through some of these questions or I will get distracted. But um, um, is, is that what I shall do now? Yes. So I have here a question for you, Jens about how are you going to uh, put in practice the sanitary measurements imposed by authorities? Well, in, uh, I'm, I'm not, I will now just be talking about Passage Festival because it's actually happening in, in, uh, in real space. Uh, you can say Denmark has been very lucky uh, in, in terms that the, 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 the outbreak of the virus haven't been that bad. That's one condition we didn't have it's not like Italy or the UK or, or, or other places. It, it's actually been uh, much easier here, uh, I would say, and that's certainly an important thing to notion. Um, the thing is that we did some test performances in, in April where we tried to, to get experience on how the crowd are reacting. And, uh, it's, it, and, and from there, we kind of uh, were quite confident that we could give out a lot of responsibility to the audience themselves, that they were actually themselves taking care that they were not getting too close to other people. And uh, this we have also been practicing at the festival uh, this year, and uh, it seems to go very well so far. And then also by putting a lot of the performances out in nature, it's not that big an issue because there's so much space where the audience can gather around a, a performance uh, happening in, in, in a landscape. We did have some smaller issues, I would say, because we were in some residential areas where there were a lot of children running around and it was completely uncontrollable, uh, you can say. So there we kind of put up some extra, uh, extra stewards with, uh, uh, with, with uh, this uh, alcohol where you can, uh, for, for everyone, and, yeah. and try to be a little bit more um, yeah, uh, take better care of, of what was going on. But, but basically, it was really, really difficult to control. The thing is that if the performance wasn't there, it, we, it, 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 they would have done something else for sure that were also not controllable. So we chose not to cancel, but actually to, to get on and try to be better in, in giving everyone the opportunity to, to, uh, um, yeah, to, to watch it in a, in, a, in a safe way. But it's, it's not easy. Uh, but I think uh, from what, what it looks like now, uh, what we're gaining from doing the festival uh, in relation to not doing the festival and be completely safe, I think it's, it's absolutely a win 
and it's uh, everybody is, is really happy that something is happening again. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you know, we all are having to deal with these sanitary things, but I guess it's not the most exciting thing to deal with, but I suppose it's something in our heads um, and in our public's heads also. Um, there was also a conversation here about the climate crisis, and I think uh, Joe has, has uh, spoken about that. Um, but it leads on to this next question, which is about travel and mobility, and about how we are going to, you know, have exchange of international artists across the globe. Um, of course, every flight we take, we know we generate a lot of oh, stuff. So, um, so what do we feel about this, the mobility of artists going forward, the travel restrictions, the visas? How, how has anybody dealing with this? Is there any thoughts? Oh, Joe is raising his hand. Uh, just seeing, not, uh, seeing the specific question, one question was asking me, do you think that next year there will be less international travel within our programs? Um, I think from our point of view, and I would imagine this is similar for quite a few festivals, I think a lot of festivals that have cancelled this year will be trying to honour their commitments to the same artists for next year, um, largely. So I think th the intention, certainly from our part and maybe from other festivals, <clears throat> in terms of our activity for next year is that we will be trying to do what we were trying to do the year before so we'll be behaving like it's a normal year um <clears throat> if there are restrictions and challenges then they'll come and we'll deal with that um i think going <clears throat> going beyond that next year is is international travel going to be less of of what we try and do i think it's Circus and outdoor arts are incredibly international in their outlook. Um, lots of the companies are international companies themselves with people of different nationalities. Lots of, um, depending where you are, virtually everywhere, it, apart from the French market, which has such a big domestic market of so many festivals and a lot of artists, it's necessary for most um, really full-time outdoor artists to try and work internationally to have enough market for their for their for their work and they want to do it um i'm not terribly enthusiastic about making artists feel guilty about traveling um as the climate change agenda i've been part of some of those discussions i think they would be entirely hypocritical for us as festivals to be putting this kind of onus on artists when actually uh, a big measure or perceived measure of our success of a festival is how many audience we get to move. We have 65,000 people coming to our festival and actually our local authority, our council, they want to see people coming from far and wide. That's what they want. They want the economic benefit of a lot of people in their cars driving to, to, to our town, thousands and thousands of people. So I don't think it's a, it would be entirely hypocritical for us to be carrying on in that way. We still are. <clears throat> And saying to artists, "Oh, have you thought about coming on a donkey?" Um, you know, <clears throat> I just don't think that's <clears throat> that's okay. Um, Brexit will be a, Brexit will be a challenge, and we don't really know how that's going to work out in terms of the mobility of artists. But we will do our best to address it. So that that's my view. That's perhaps might not be palatable to others, but that's what I think. Thank you. I mean, I mean, do you, do do does anybody else think that rather than artists just traveling for a, a, a weekend of performances, that you could work with them on a longer length of time? Uh, Anna, are you nodding there? Um, I mean, in, we need to continue to support artists on mobility. Yes, we must, but. We need to find a more sustainable way to travel and move. We have to find a way of networking and touring the territories. And we, as the managers of our festivals, are the ones who have to lead that. If a company has to go to France by train or plane because one performance in a festival or in one theater, this is unsustainable. We must look for other ways to exploit our visit to this country, to this city, or to this territory. Mm -hmm. I think that we must prioritize and relate it to professional changing knowledge, whether artistic or management, 
should be face to face uh, if it's indispensable. For digital tools should be considered as an alternative. And all these residences or processes that we can carry out in our nearby territories to don't need to go to other end of the world. And we will only do this when it's really worth on it. And the same as the same way as tourism or business travel should change their operating patterns, in ours we should do the same. And not just the artists, also the managers or the directors or, or wherever we are. That's Thank my you. Thank you. Fanny, you are waving your hand. Yeah, I just, um, I think Anna just said a lot of things that I wanted to say that uh, uh, for me also, like uh, artist mobility, I think it's very important. We have to support it, but we have to think a little bit uh, in another way about this. I don't want to emphasize too much this political aspect, but also I think it's very important to invite uh, international voices to, to Hungary, especially, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about my perspective because that's how we can keep the people open. And also about this regional thing. And that's what um, we are planning to launch some kind of uh, networking in the region, how to make it more sustainable, how to, even though the most of the festivals in this region are not too rich. So it's a, a challenge to, to invite like bigger international companies or, or uh, artists, but how to join force and then uh, make this small look, uh, regional uh, network and just to make it um, by, uh, travelable also by train so not uh, just by, by uh, flying uh, yeah I think that was all what I wanted to, yeah. to add I, I, and also that using the digital platform so not just always just travel come come and go and back but also there are parts of the collaboration which can be on digital and then yeah. how to split it Yes, and there are a few comments in the box here about obviously the digital thing. Is there a way to con converse and highlight artists through online and support them and fund them to support their endeavors online? And, and I think we have touched on of these things. I have one question here about, can, we, can you share any practical examples of what you are doing right now in the short term to deliver festivals outside of online? And I think, you know, your festival, Jens, that you are delivering right now is outside of online, um, which we've already spoken about. Is there any other practical examples that you are aware of that you could share with the audience? Well, I have one, if you don't. <laughs> Anybody want to speak instead of me? I mean, I, I can share my practice, but I just speak two, two minutes ago and I feel it like being so... Oh, you're taking present. over, Rana. And, and, <laughs> I mean, you already know that... that Go for it, tell us. You already know that Filatarga can make the exhibition of the festival, which is basically the identity and the essence of the festival. And because of that, we are making two big changes related to the market, related to the exhibition, related to the market, La Llotja, which is marketplace, as Fira Targa is recorded, La Llotja online, and it's going digital and long term. I mean, La Llotja represents, we would like to represent a renovate meeting point for the sector, a virtual marketplace that transcends time and space. And our idea is to create a big professional community it's going to be a pilot project, something pretty new. We try new contact tools and we hope that professionals will sort of to it and get to used to it. Mike Rivalda, which is the responsible of the market, is working very hard on it. He's a great professional and I'm sure that Lodge Online will, be, will bring new opportunities. It will start the 9th and 10th of September. The, the register is already open, so of you are invited that refers to the market and to the exhibition to the artistic program because we can do the exhibition during the feeder days and in order to kind of compensate this situation we came up with this idea of launching a circuit called it nomadic circuit the circuit will be the equivalent of the artistic programming suspended a selection of 30 companies, proposals, mainly outdoor, 
with diversity of formats, disciplines, and they will be exhibited in towns and cities, different Catalans and some Spanish ter territories through 2021. And of course, because we are a market, and each exhibition will be a plan and activity in order to promote and stimulate the street arts market. The main goals to promote artistic- Thank you, Anna. Thank you. I'm going to give my example now too. <laughs> and then I want to come to Federico. Um, um, so in, in Ireland, we have uh, the longest running street arts festival is called Waterford Spree in the southeast. And it has been an international arts festival for over 25 years. And this year, it's going to present work both online and physically in September, the beginning of September, the 4th to the 13th. And it is going to present um, work for the local audience with Irish artists. We are, uh, and they are going to present things that are going to be stationary and transitory. So you move, the audience moves past a, an experience. It doesn't actually stop and gather and connect with you know hundreds of people all at the same time but there will be things on every evening when all of the commercial activity of the town is closed the town is quiet so you won't have the usual hustle and bustle and then the the there will be stationary pieces there will be walkabout pieces there will be uh, mobile works that move through the through the space so this is a new very new modern concept for them to think about doing like like this because and they have turned it around in literally a few months obviously from from traditionally doing uh performances which gather thousands of people through the town and engages the entire community to reinventing the whole model so i'm very interested and curious and of course we in isaacs are working in partnership with waterford spree to help bring some emerging artists into the the program and to present new work so that's uh, one model worth looking at. There will be an international online element to it. So um, I will share that information with you in due course. But before, because we're nearly at the end of our time and I have two people, uh, well, I have three people actually, I need to urgently say a few things. Um, but first, maybe if I could go to Federico because he is launching the Fresh Street uh, the fresh street, the freshest of fresh streets, with a very short time frame to present a whole new reimagining. So tell us, Federico, how are you going to do it? I have more things uh, than these. Uh, All right, <laughs> my, I we'll try to be quick. <laughs> my question was, uh, uh, is this a uh, uh, meeting between us uh, uh, more inspirational or more practical? Because there have been uh, a lot of practical questions uh, that is impossible for us to answer because uh, it's not our affair. It's something that the policymaker has to face off to some political issues. We can just sensibilize uh, and we can work on it, but even uh, environmental uh, issues, uh, Yes, it's subject, but uh, we cannot resolve everything. We can, we, I think that uh, we have to, uh, to question to ourselves if uh, mob international mobility is something that is okay with the environment, environmental uh, issue or not, because we spend a lot of uh, gasoline and a lot of money and a lot of uh, everything to put, uh, to let our shows seen between, uh, for, uh, by audience around the world. So it's not, it's around the, the role and the question that, that we have to uh, put to ourselves, uh, our roles uh, in, the, in, the, in the context. Uh, so that uh, I have two things to, to say. One is practical, is about, about uh, uh, Fresh Street. Yes, Fresh, Fresh Street will be in November. Uh, we had uh, moved uh, uh, a little bit later. It will be digital, uh, but uh, uh, we are going to try, and we are quite interesting how Targa is going to do the the showcase, because uh, it's with digital you can do almost everything, uh, but the, the the physical contact is okay. But is, uh, what is more interesting is not uh, uh, the tool in itself, uh, but how you use uh, 
you use all the tools in a, uh, in a uh, digital environment. And we are going to experiment. I try to network in a digital, net, in, in a digital uh, framework. Uh, try to, 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 to let possible all this kind of networking, uh, even the uh, person one, one to one, one to two, to, to, to have also the little meetings in the, in the, in the time uh, between uh, one program and the other. So that uh, is, uh, it, everything is, uh, well, yes, for sure. We are not sure that everything is okay, but uh, it, it's a try to, uh, to, to take uh, the nature of networking during the events and uh, putting that uh, in a digital uh, framework. So this is one of the possibility and the week is the 1st of November. Okay. Anyway, we are going to send everything uh, um, we are sorry we are late, but uh, uh, it has been quite hard here in Italy. I don't know, but uh, here in uh, a very, very, very strong uh, work to do with uh, policy makers and artists and uh, festivals. But I, I would like to close with, with uh, 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 an inspirational thought, because uh, 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 before one of the one, one composer an italian composer Ezio boss i don't know if you know him him he has died uh, some weeks uh, before the you know, after the, the 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 lockdown and he said that uh, uh, we are uh, we are scared about what uh, what happens and we need to come back to normality every uh, all all the people everyone talk about uh, come back to normality 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 doesn't have no meaning. The, the, <laughs> normality doesn't exist. The, the, uh, what exists is the nature, nature of people, of places, and the nature. Of, what, what is a nature is to come together. And so if the uh, nature of human being is to stay together, I think that we are. We, we have to think about how festival, how even public space, how whatever may happen in an artistical way in the public space is this, is a, a way to bring people back to stay together. And this is the nature, our nature. Thank you, Federico. I mean, it really speaks to the heart. Um, we have very little time left, but I just, I'm conscious, is there anybody else wants to add anything? Lars, did you want to say anything else in response? No, I, uh, I've been listening and I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to become the facilitator of all these great ideas, both uh, nationally and internationally. Super, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we really, really value our relation with, uh, you know, Arts Councils, of course, and it's essential that this relation is open and transparent and good. And on that note, I'd like to invite uh, Catherine. She wanted to say a few more words on uh, projects that are happening with the Arts Council in England? Um, I, really, I just want to um, uh, uh, reiterate what Lars has just said, that um, it's been really inspiring listening to everybody. And I think the values that underpin art in public spaces continue whatever form they may have to take in the medium term, long term, um, I guess it's about hanging on to that and it is our job to work with artists, producers and the public to ensure that we meet, that, that we do just that, that we're able to, to stay afloat. Um, we put in a number of emergency responses immediately after um, the, uh, COVID hit the UK and it's been particularly bad and I'm just about to probably spend the next two months um, working on our cultural recovery fund, the government's recovery fund. And I think a lot of the values that we've been hearing today will be really important in terms of recovery, healing, um, all of that as we move through this new world. So I think really that's all I want to say. Um, 
at the moment. So thank you, Lucy, for the opportunity. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, have we any final words from any of our panelists before I go to Jens? Lars? Yeah, I just wanted um, it, uh, to, to add one thing. I um, think it would be uh, extremely important, I'm talking about policy now, for the Arts Council to really take seriously into account what has been said from Hungary. I think uh, we should uh, basically come together on a European level, even though we have Brexit, uh, let's forget about that, and then see how we can put more pressure on the European um, Council and European uh, Parliament in regard to what's happening in Hungary. And I think the Arts Council should try to play an international collaborative role uh, in relation to this terrible development. I, I think really broadly Arts Council England's desire to work internationally is undiminished by whatever is happening now and with Brexit. We, we, we really, it's so important to continue with international work and collaboration and exchanges. Absolutely, here to, here to that. Catherine, did you have your hand up? No? No, okay, I thought I say. Um, I mean, that this is exactly the whole point about this, is uh, looking at our collective. I mean, we work together across all of these partnerships all the time between, I mean, I personally have benefited so much from our European uh, interactions. It's, it's invaluable and it's been heartbreaking to not be able to meet up with all of you lovely people that, as we normally do in the summer and see each other at festivals. But it is, uh, it is interesting to see how we have recreated our relationships in different ways. Um, uh, Jens, can I give you the final word? Yes, thank mm. you. I just want to say thank you to everyone who took part, part in this, all, all the panelists, of course. Lucy, you did an amazing, amazing job as always. You are fantastic. And also all the attendees in uh, uh, listening to this. Uh, we are very happy that, um, that we were able to, to have this discussion about festivals. I think it's an important discussion that should go on. And I hope we, we will try to find initiatives to, uh, to see how we can continue. I would also like to, to thank you, uh, my UK colleagues uh, at So Festival, who has been taking care of the technical side of this. Also, Mark Navite, who has been very supportive towards this. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hope to see you all in the future because it's uh, for me, it's been uh, a great discussion. And I think I have also learned a lot about this. So cool. Thank you. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Good night. And good to see you all. <laughs>